we're going to talk about how to compile a Linux kernel, but why would you do that? Why? There's several reasons that I can think of why you might want to compile a Linux kernel. The first one is maybe you bought a new laptop like I did. And the current versions of the Linux kernel that were included with your distribution didn't have the version that you needed. So you can go to the source code for the Linux kernel and you can download it and recompile it. Now, if you're on some distributions, you may be able to find that kernel already compiled for you. So make sure that you that you you know you look for those first. One of the other reasons is is kind of similar to that, and that is maybe there's missing drivers in the current version of the kernel that your distribution is using, say a Wi-Fi driver or which would be common or a sound driver. That's another common one that's missing. And you need the newer kernel that has the driver in it that you need. So it's kind of similar to the, hey, I have new hardware and I need support for it. But yeah, but also it could be just particular components on your existing hardware that you need. The third thing is you might want to optimize specific hardware. So you might want a custom kernel to allow you to tailor that to your specific hardware potentially improving performance and resource utilization. Maybe you're trying to uh, reduce the amount of footprint that the kernel has or increase the performance. Now realize that there are a lot of different uh, dials that you can turn in your existing kernel without having to go and generate one, but there are a few that you can't, and you have to go and, and do that in the kernel. There, there's... They're trying, I mean, the, the Linux kernel folks have been trying over the years to reduce that so that you have the, the uh, ability to modify some of them uh, you know, through the sysctl or uh, maybe modifying variables in your proc table uh, can do that as well. So it does pay to, to spend some time and learn about the specific features of your kernel so you know what's going on. You might need more customization and control over your kernel. That is, I'm enabling or I'm disabling features that uh, that are in the kernel that I may never use, or maybe there's something I do want that's turned off. So also, you might want patches. Maybe you're, you don't want to wait for your distribution to catch up with the patches, and you're compiling that kernel so that you can get those specific patches which might address bugs, it might add new features, or it might in implement security enhancements that are not yet available in the mainstream. So one of the other ones is, or is the obvious one, is maybe you're just trying to learn how, all this stuff that's in the kernel and how to do it, uh, what you can change and what you can't. Now that's going to take a lot longer to learn because there's, there is documentation all over. But the best place to start is with the Linux kernel folks themselves. They have some very good documents that will walk you through uh, the basics of the kernel, but they'll take you even a, a level up. They'll, they'll If you want to become a kernel developer, they will take you all the way up that far. So yeah, you can go as far as you want and learn as much as you want about the kernel. And that is really the, the last reason is because you want to position yourself to contribute to the development of that kernel. Maybe there's something uh, that you had an idea about that you want to add, but you're not quite sure how to do it. So this puts you on the road to understanding how the kernel works and the ways that you can, you know, create a change and submit it for inclusion in the next build. I'm DJ Ware, and this is the Cyber Gizmo. Before we begin, I would like to take a moment and thank my sponsors, both my Patreon members and also the members of the channel. You guys make this content possible. If you want to help, I have a link below to join the Patreons, or you can join the channel. Let's go, let's go through the steps on what we need. Uh, and let's just kind of walk through it real quick. And uh, yeah, you're, you're going to have to set aside some time because the kernel is big and it will take, it depends on your hardware, it can take anywhere from 20 minutes all the way up to several hours 
depending upon the speed of your hardware. So let's dive in, let's get started. Okay, so what we're gonna do first is download the package that we need from here. The latest one is right here, is 679. So we can just click on that and we'll get a tar file down. And we'll unt we'll untar it. Yeah, yeah, it takes a while. It's pretty big. Okay. So the first thing we want we want to do is we want to make sure that we have all of the necessary packages we need in order to build this. So. Uh, let's get a list of those. So the ones we need, we need uh, Git, Fake Root, Build Essential, NCurses Dev, XZUtils, LibSSL-Dev, BC Flex, LibElf-Dev, and Bison. And uh, I'm on Debian doing this. This is a straight up Debian 12 install. So we'll go ahead and do that. Get these down. They're already down. So we'll do a uname. And you can see I am on Debian. It's 61018. And we're going to take this up to 679. So the next thing, once we have our packages down, we'll need to do a menu a make menu config. Now, I have seen some places where they recommend that you copy over your existing config file. Yeah, you can do that, but I wouldn't recommend it. The reason why I don't recommend it is it's fine if you want to do that if you're you're working on customizing your existing version of Linux. But because we're going up so far, there's going to be things in that old configuration in your boot directory that we don't want. So, yeah. So we're going to we're going to start with the one that comes with the distro and unless you've made changes to your dot config file uh there shouldn't be any need to uh to copy it over anyway cuz these will have the same things in it but if you have done that hopefully you have documented what you changed and then you can make those changes here again So we get a menu up. This is a curses menu. Uh, and it's from here that you can make changes to the kernel. So what kind of changes would you make? Well, you might want to eliminate some things that maybe you don't need. Or or maybe you're you have maybe you're working on new code that you want to test. And so yeah, this would give you an opportunity to do that. Uh, today there is really very little reason to recompile a kernel unless you just want to. These are keys. You see the square braces around the option that has the uh, asterisk means that it's been selected. The, the square brackets means that this is, uh, as far as today, I'm not changing anything. I'm just gonna compile this and use it on my Debian. Uh, yeah, so I'm just gonna save it. And that's gonna create a new config file for me based on the entries in here. And we should be done. I should have a, a dot config with today's date in it. So at this point I am ready to do a make. Um, there will be a problem but I'm just gonna let it occur. I'm gonna give this uh, a minus J4, which says to use four processors to do the compilation. Now this one, this machine has six. So yeah, we can, I'm, I'm going to allocate one to uh, the kernel and the other one to glances. So, and then what, that's why I'm only giving it. 
So we'll, this will take some time. So as you can see, I have an error. So, and I can't see it. I can scroll back here. <laughs> it's not, where did it go? And, I, and I'll hit the top and I won't know what it is. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna do the make again. It should pick up right here and, and, uh, and then we'll know what the problem actually is. I'm just, no J4, just, just to make. So as you can see, now I have the air up and it's saying disable config debug info BTF. So the way you handle that is there is a scripts directory. And in there, there should be a, a shell script called config. It's right there, config. So I can do And then we just put in a, a minus D. And then we have to go all the way back up. I should have copied it, but I didn't. So, and we need to copy this right here. Because I'm, I'm just going to disable it. And when I hit paste, it should put me right there. Okay, so now this is going to start over. Because it's going to, yeah, it's going to modify everything, so. Okay, just two more steps to do. First one is we need to do a, a sudo make modules install. It's all the modules that are that go that are built by the kernel compile need to be placed into a special directory, and that's what we're gonna do here. And there they go. Now the final step is to actually make the install that has added it to our grub it has put all the necessary entries into our boot directory so the only thing left to do now is reboot and now hopefully we'll be able to uh yeah log in and check the system out Let's see what we got. Six, seven, nine. So we're up on the latest kernel. And that completes as far as the actual build and, and of, uh, of Linux kernel is concerned. And my Debian is now converted to running 6.7.9. Learning all the uh, ins and outs of a kernel build can take quite a bit of time to learn. You can go as deep as you want to go. I mean, if you want to get to the point where you're writing your own device drivers, great. I mean, that's that's wonderful. But just realize, take your time, and there's a there's a lot of code in there. A lot of code code in there. So with all of that, I hope you enjoyed today's video on how to build a Linux kernel. Um, yeah, I'm not going to go in much deeper than this. I mean it. Uh, this video would turn into a, a course. So anyway, I hope you enjoyed it today. And if you did, uh, please, as always, like and subscribe. And hope to see you again in the next one. And bye for now.